Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the 50th annual uh, Canadian Western Exhibition. We are so excited to be with you here today. We would have loved to be chatting with you in person, but we're really excited to be um, chatting with you through Zoom. So here today we have Courtney, and she's going to talk to you guys all about sheep. But before we get into that, we're just going to do a couple of housekeeping items. So teachers, we would love to hear your students' questions. Um, it would be great if you could put them in the chat and include your name, your school, and your grade so we can give you the shout out. Um, it's a noisy place in here, so we're going to try to do our very best to make sure that you guys can hear us. Um, and make sure that, you're, um, that you guys are on mute just so that we don't have um, that feedback with a noisy place. We want to make sure that we can hear Courtney give you guys all the answers. So we, I'm going to hand it over to Courtney. You can do a little bit of an introduction Sweet. and maybe tell us a couple things about sheep. Sounds good. Hey kiddos, uh, my name is Courtney McDougall. I farm just outside of uh, Regina. My parents farm out there. Um, this is my 34th show at Canadian Western Agribition. I've been a volunteer with Agribition for 17 years and I'm in my 11th year as a board of director. Um, my siblings and I, there's actually four of us, um, got sheep back when I was eight and I'm 37 now so I'll let you all do that math and we started with uh, this type of breed behind me the North Country Cheviots and we started with eight ewes and one ram and uh, years later here we are um, slowly my siblings have moved down to the states and started their families so I am the lone one and I'm a very proud mother of two excellent kiddos who are 11 and 10 Carson and Josie and so together we've uh, continued with the sheep and um, love it. During the day, I am a school community outreach worker at Mother Teresa Middle School here in Regina. And so I get to deal with you kind of kiddos everywhere and every day. And it's uh, definitely the blessing, the highlight of my life. But I am super excited um, to bring a little bit of the farm to your schools and excited for the questions you have. And I'll do the best that I can to answer them. Okay, so we have lots of schools here. So we have Ecole Lumsden. We have Henry Braun, um, we have lots more. So we're gonna start off with um, an easy question. So the type of sheep that you raise, are they sheep for wool or are they sheep for meat? Okay, so on our farm we have a couple different breeds. Uh, the sheep that I have for purebreds are North Country Cheviots and they're actually a combination. They're med medium wool um, sheep and so they can be considered as wool. Um, and then they also, we do a uh, farm gate on our farm and have an arbitoire that is registered. So uh, we do butcher quite a few of our lambs for that purposes too. My dad runs Suffolk and they're a black face and they are primarily for meat. Um, the South Downs that we have can be for wool and meat. And then the Hampshires are uh, primarily for wool as well. So those are just a few of the breeds. And then we have a lot of commercials that we cross feed and primarily the crossbred commercials are for meat purposes. Okay, great. So we have a great question from St. Angela, grade five, six. Uh, sorry, we just lost the question. Uh, how many sheep do you have on your farm? So currently, um, recently my dad has retired and for some they'd be like you would get more sheep, but unfortunately with the elements lately and the drought, uh, we've actually went down. So currently we have about 70 ewes, purebred ewes, and then a small flock of 20 commercial uh, use and then we're running about seven rams right now so just under a hundred sheep we would have on our farm at this time great question thank you for that one okay cannot grade four five how much wool do they grow each year so it all depends um, the wool breeds will actually grow thicker wool um, and for us most of the time you you will shear once a year um, so it all the depth of it is not really measured it's about the fiber and the crimping within the wool um, so those are where they get the density points. Um, so we don't really measure it, but once a year we do share uh, the entire flocks. And then sometimes around uh, breeding time and lambing time, we'll do their tummies and crutch the back ends, their bums, just to keep everything very clean for the, for the birthing process. Okay, great, thanks Courtney. Uh, Miss Schuster's class wants to know, what is the average size of a sheep? So uh, when they're born, anything from like seven to 15 pounds, obviously you have some bigger, bigger lambs in comparison. It's kind of similar to babies. We all have different averages. And then as they uh, mature, 
Uh, lambs will come, usually they'll, they'll go to the market between 90 and 120 pounds is uh, our market range. And then for like these guys behind, um, Cujo right here is probably about 200. And Prince, although he's a little bit shorter, he's more stout, he's probably pushing 250. So it gives you an idea. And they're, they're rams, which are the male terminology that we use. And they're both yearling rams, so they're one year old, actually. Great, thanks. Uh, great question from St. Peter, grade 6, 7. How long are sheep pregnant for? So sheep, preg sheep are pregnant for 148 days. It works out to be about five months, their gestation cycle. Um, and uh, so some farmers will actually um, lamb out twice a year, and some will do a, a coin toss and it's three times a year. So uh, depending on how you diversify and how you split your flock, you can have a birthing process uh, three times a year. That's a great question. And St. Peter's is actually the elementary school I went to. Awesome. So, hello to the Panthers out there. Great. Okay, Roseman, grade three, four. How old do sheep get? So it's, that again comes back to their uh, different breeds. Kind of like us, we're all different ethnicities and different walks of life. Uh, sheep and cattle and horses, there's all kinds of different breeds. So depending, usually anywhere from seven to like 10 is um, uh, the normal age, I'd say. There are definitely some breeds that uh, will go to be more like 11, 12. Okay, great. Uh, Ms. Lettner's class grade two, do sheep have any predators on the farm? Yes, uh, so that's a great question. That's actually one of our biggest challenges as shepherds is the predation out there. And so uh, it all depends on your geographics of where you're located. Um, for BC people at times they have cougar attacks, bear attacks, uh, wolves, um, same into Alberta depending on where you're situated. Um, for us ourselves, we farm in between Regina and Lumsden on Highway 11. Our, our biggest predator would be between a coyote and actually like neighbor's dogs. So depending, um, that's the reality that uh, oftentimes it'll be a coyote or a neighbor's dog for our predation. Okay. And for those uh, kiddos, we oftentimes will run a guardian dog is what they're called. And then um, other farms run, also we run llamas and other farms will run llamas or donkeys. So there's a couple different uh, situations and different solutions to predation. Awesome, Ms. Uh, Harder's class, how many babies do sheep usually have? Okay, that's a fantastic question. So for a North Country Cheviot, uh, twins are quite usual, uh, sometimes triplets, uh, but ideally we like twins. Um, for your Suffolk, your South Downs, your Hampshires, that's a similar situation. Now there's some more maternal um, breeds like an Arcot um, or Rideau's and they'll go anywhere from uh, triplets to quads. Um, sometimes they'll have five lambs. So it all again comes back to the different breeds, uh, the purpose as to why you're running those flocks and then it's, uh, the setup of your farm. Great. Um... St. Peter's again, grade six, seven. How long do sheep sleep for each night? Oh, <laughs> you know, I have never really clocked them. Um, but like animals, they're probably fairly similar, at least five hours. Um, when it gets dark, they, they're not normally nocturnal, so they don't go out. They tend to bunch up and bed down um, at nighttime. So I'd say at least a good five to eight hours a night, depending on what's going on. If there's some commotion out in the pens, obviously they'll wake up. Um, animals are very unique in that they can uh, anticipate storms, um, they anticipate predation as it comes in, right? So they're very aware of what is going on at times. Great. Ms. Schuster's class, how much does a sheep cost? Are they expensive? So um, I guess what I would ask with that question, are you asking in a carcass weight, so like dead or alive? Um, for a person who's trying to buy the meat um, and consume the meat, uh, right now the going average at dead weight is seven pound or seven dollars per pound. So I'll I'll put it out there. Most of our uh, lambs that we're farm gating will range from 29 to 36 pounds at seven dollars a pound. So you figure out how much that is. And then based on purebred and the genetic side, if that's what you are interested in and in raising them, uh, it, can, it can fluctuate quite a bit. Right now, I would say you're looking at for some purebred use anywhere from $500 to $800 you'd spend. And for rams, you're in about $800 to $1,000. So. Awesome. Okay. 
Um, grade four, St. Elizabeth, how tall do sheep get? That, that again is a breed determination. Like humans, um, the other things that can definitely impact that is our environment, uh, feed quality, the genetics. Like, like you and me, uh, oftentimes we, we are a combination of our mom and dad. And so we get a lot of our genetics, including height, right, and structure size. Uh, from those two humans. So depending on uh, the size, and in, in our industry, we call them the dam would be your mom and the sire is your dad uh, references. So depending, um, for North Country Cheviots, you'll see uh, Cujo's a little bit taller than Prince. Genetically, Cheviots are very British style and they come from Britain. And so they're, the normal size of it is a lot shorter and stockier. So um, suffix can be very, very tall, um, but it depends genetically what you're looking to breed for. Okay, Ecole Lumpton grades four, five, and Hailey and Clara. Um, how much does a sheep eat in a day? So they actually will, they're grazers. So uh, they will consume one to two pounds of food, uh, grain and foliage a day, and then they drink way more than eight cups of water, I can promise you that. Um, so if you put in that, they're easily one to two pounds and they get fed three times a day. So that's about six, six pounds on average between hay and grain and your water. Awesome. Uh, St. Peter is six, seven. What are the maximum and minimum temperatures that a sheep can withstand? Well, um, <laughs> here on the plains, the max has been, I think the hottest that I've survived is 36 plus 36. And uh, most of the time they'll survive your minus 50s. Um, a lot of it requires some shelter and bedding, so you'll have a good straw structure or some uh, shavings. But for the most part, they are, are honestly probably in a better position with their wool than us humans who put on layers and layers and layers. So um, in the summertime, a big reason of why we shear in the hotter months is so that they uh, shed that wool off of them and are a little bit um, hotter. But with wool, the reality is that it actually keeps their body temperature fairly sound and comfortable for the most part. Uh, so those are the two pluses. Great. A wonderful question from Arcola grade fives. How does a sheep's stomach work? So a sheep is a ruminant and it actually has four stomachs. Um, and so it has various different stomachs and um, what it does, it's often like a cow, and so it chews its cud, right? And it'll bring it up once and then bring it back down into the second stomach, and then it'll resuscitate it, bring it up again, put it down in the third stomach, and then the fourth time, uh, the very little amount goes back down and it's either processed through and like taken in as nutrients or goes through the intestine and is disposed of through their feces or urine. Great. Uh, Ms. Schuster's class, do sheep like being in groups? Yes, oftentimes they flock. Now, um, some of them will group up a little bit different and not be as flock uh, management, but majority of the different breeds are very, um, very reliant on each other and they'll often uh, use each other for their own safety and well being. So they, they kind of are similar to elephants, uh, but without the, the reality that they don't flock for life because they are dispersed. But when you bring new, um, animals onto the farm, you can see there is a window of 24 to 72 hours where they'll kind of run them down and see and then slowly blend them into the flock. Wonderful. Um, Thompson 3 fours. how fast can sheep run? Well, I've never clocked one, but uh, um, <laughs> I, I would say that they can, they're pretty fast. They can outrun me on a good day. Um, and so easily at least 30 clicks for sure, if not faster. Great. Um, question from Jeff, Jeff's class. How long does it take for babies to reach maturity? So uh, that again kind of is dependent on um, the breed. Um, usually the maturity comes at about uh, a mature level and so two years old. Um, so at that time, um, they're still maturing, but they're almost like fully grown. So in between two to four years. Wonderful. Um, Rosemont, three fours. What does all the wool get used for? Well, that's a great one. So uh, 
what I would say is, has anyone ever heard of wool socks or your like wool sweaters? Um, the fashion industry has a lot of felted goods, so it gets felted. Um, it's made into medical blankets. Uh, the hides at times are used so that uh, people who are hospitalized for lengthy times don't get bed sores. It's made into rugs. It's made into laundry balls that help you, instead of throwing like a bounce sheet in, you throw a laundry ball in, it helps with static. Um, it's made into afghans. It's been in pillows, just about everything that you can think that could be made can be made by wool. Wow, there's so many uses, great. Um, wonderful question from Ms. Robbins, grade five. What do you do when sheep are sick? Much like any animal, um, it depends on the extent of how sick they are. So like you and I, we can sometimes get the average cold or the flu, um, but there are times when that, that common cold and flu is a little bit worse. And when it's really bad like you, uh, you'll go and see your family doctor or you might have to take a trip to emergency. Uh, oftentimes when it's really bad and us as farmers can't navigate it on our own, we'll use the, the services of a veterinarian. And so they'll go in and a vet is often like the animal form of a do medical doctor. Okay, grade four from Regina Christian School. What different types of sheep are there? So in Canada, there are over a hundred different breeds of sheep. So um, there's quite a few different ones. Uh, to name a few that are at the show today, we have Charlays, we have Dorsets, we have Hampshires, we have Rudoke Arcots, we have Canadian Arcots, we have North Country Cheviots, we have Suffolks, uh, we have... Uh, a bunch of commercials here. We have horn dorsets, so they have the horns on top of them versus pulled dorsets. Um, we have some Ile de France and we have, I, I think that's the majority of the breeds awesome, here today at impressive. least. But, oh, Shropshires. Uh, and I think that's the majority of the, breed, the breeds here today at the show. Great, grade six, seven, St. Michael, they wanna know, are sheep usually obedient? <laughs> so that's quite similar to um, you all as students. Um, like students, we uh, sometimes come to school and we have forgotten to attach our listening ears, or uh, we have a case of ants in our pants, um, or we're just having one of those days that's a little bit challenging and we're not feeling our best selves. So very similar, sheep can have off days too. Um, with show preparation, sheep traditionally aren't on halters and so it does take some time to show prep animals and get them used to the halters because we do show them. So uh, that requires time of bringing them in and putting it on their faces and then um, uh, giving them some time tied up and just moving along them and making some noise so they get used to the confines of like not running away. They're very similar to us in that they do the fight, flight, and freeze response, uh, just like humans up in their brains. And so uh, they get used to that halter and, and you build trust and respect in them. They always have trust in you as you're the person, you're the shepherd who comes to feed them every day. So you build that report and that relationship off the get-go. But once you start to take some of their exoticness out of them, it, it's a different trust in that they come to trust that you're going to keep them safe um, and that they can rely on you. Awesome. Okay, we have lots of questions and we have 11 minutes left. So okay, let's try fire. and get through these. Okay, uh, Ms. Wolf's class, grade, uh, Thompson 3-4, how high can sheep jump? Well, um, on my farm I've seen a sheep jump almost six feet over a fence. So uh, that's the highest I've seen. Um, Cheviots are really good at jumping. Um, I wish I had some of their abilities. Um, and it reminds me as a shepherd, I need higher fences. <laughs> Great. Uh, grade four, Massey, how old is your oldest sheep? On our farm right now, my oldest ewe is nine years old. Okay. Uh, grade six, Lumsden, uh, Ms. Adams class. Uh, they would like to know how much food they eat each day. Okay, so again, that comes, they're eating about a pound a session, close to six pounds. Miss Adams class, who I also know, she's a lovely soul. And I should say hi to my nephew, AJ, that's in that class as well. Um, but, um, and then they take in um, quite a few pounds of water. Like us, it's really important that they stay hydrated. So um, it'd be close to six to 10 pounds of uh, 
food and water and foil it, forage together combined probably. Great. Um, uh, Ms. Hammett's class, grade two, St. Bernadette, what is your favorite breed of sheep? I'm biased. Uh, my favorite breed of sheep is the North Country Cheviot. And the reasons that it's my favorite is that they are kind of headstrong, like me. Um, and they have personalities. Um, but once you start to work with them, they calm down. They don't like small areas, also like me. Um, they like to be open and free. Um, but they are like really gentle giants. And I love that they have this zest to live. So when they get sick and you doctor them, they oftentimes get better. So I really appreciate that about them. Okay, M. Ronate wants to know, do the sheep have any defensive skills? Um, for sure. So when we're working a uh, Border Collie puppy, they will definitely sight her um, and you hope that she has enough eye to push them. But at times they'll stomp. Similar when they have babies that are very protective, they might stomp at you. And if anything, they will charge and bite you. Uh, rams you have to be really careful of because obviously at breeding times, um, they get some of those uh, tendencies, but so that would be their biggest defense mechanism and to spin to keep their feet and their throats protected. Okay, grade three, St. Elizabeth, they want to know, um, do you keep your sheep in a barn or do you keep them outside? So uh, in Ontario, primarily their sheep are confined into barns and they do a lot of barn uh, birthing. For us, our sheep are outside 24 seven. Um, except for at lambing time, they come into the jugs, into the barn, and they'll be in there for a week or two, and then we boot them back outside. Other people actually, depending on the, their lambing season, will lamb out in June, and they'll pasture lamb, so they're completely out on a pasture lambing, um, and then the shepherd just goes and, and looks over them every day. Great. Uh, St. Michael 3-4, have your sheep ever escaped? All the time. <laughs> If there's a small hole in the fence, they're going to go through it. And if they can jump the fence, they're going to go through it. So it's a constant, uh, it's a constant maintenance for shepherds, the fencing and making sure the confines of animals are uh, safe. Great. Uh, grade four, Regina Christian, um, are sheep smart? Super smart. Um, even though most people say they're not, uh, oftentimes they will outsmart a shepherd. So I like to think myself as a fairly intelligent, educated human. So I'm going to give them um, the benefit of the doubt that they're smart because at times they have definitely outsmarted me. Great. Um, there was a question, and my apologies, I forget who asked it, but when are baby sheep born? So that, that comes down to a lot of different things. So for a North Country Cheviot, their maternal instinct is that you often they will not catch or breed prior to February. Anytime after they'll catch. So you can, you can be lambing uh, for February. Um, which would be January, December, November, October, September, end of August, September. Um, oftentimes they will not catch in June and July. You can synchronize them using um, some different um, medications, but all different sheep have different um, times in which they catch. And so talking to them, Suffolk's are just about anywhere, but most of the time they'll lamb out anywhere from January to June. Okay, great. Uh, grade four Massey, how many sheep are at Agribition? Uh, this year we had 153 sheep from 36 exhibitors. Okay, grade four fives from ELES. How do you know if a sheep is sick? So a couple different things is, oftentimes um, you'll see their ears go out front, so their ears will start to droop. Um, they might look a little like hunched over. Uh, they might not get up. You can touch the ends of their nose because their temperature gauge is fairly in their nose or you take their temperature which uh, with a thermometer. Um, and you don't put it in their mouth, it does go in the opposite end of their mouth. But um, you take uh, temperature as well, but oftentimes they'll show some uh, distress. And so as a shepherd, slowly over the years, you figure it out, it can always be something else. So navigating what's wrong is really the, is really the homework that starts to happen when something uh, starts showing signs of sickness. Okay, great. Um, Ms. Schuster's class, have you ever gotten a multicolored sheep? Yes, actually, so on our farm, we crossbreed quite a bit. So the South Downs with the Cheviots, the Suffolks with the Cheviots. Uh, we've had um, horned, horned uh, black faces. So oftentimes there's lots of different uh, pigmentations. Great. Um, Ms. Schuster's class again, why are sheep mostly white? 
The wool is white, and actually when you shear them uh, and get closer down, it'll be white or like a yellow because of the lanolin in the wool. So um, if you guys were here, and some of you have been here over the years, I'll let you uh, hold some wool, and you'll feel the oil in, in the wool, and it's called lanolin, and it actually, if you had a, if you had a cut, and you put it in, it stings, and then like within the next 24 hours, your cut's fully healed. So uh, quite a few of them are white, but there is different wool pigmentations. Um, but you're correct, most of them are white, and it's just the genetic. Probably because of uh, temperatures too, if you think about it, with a black coat, it would be a lot hotter in plus 36 weather. Okay, grade four Massey, how many female sheep do you have? Female sheep, we have just under 80 female sheep. Okay, and then how many male sheep do you have? Uh, with the yearlings and the ram lambs and the matures, we're probably close to 25. Okay, great. So we're a little bit over 100 sheep on our farm, I guess. Okay, and that question is from grade four, St. Elizabeth. Um, say, grade two, St. Elizabeth, do sheep just eat all day or do they play with things? Oh, they definitely graze, and the lambs are a lot of fun. They'll play with each other and jump. Their mums will be laying down, and they'll jump on top of their mums, and then they run circles. So they're, they're very active like us. They'll graze a little bit. Um, they are known as grazers, so they often eat, and then they keep like moving and then eat a little bit more. Okay. Uh, grade 4, 5, ELAS, do sheep prefer fenced enclosures or the outdoors pastures? Pardon? Do sheep prefer... Um, uh, fenced enclosures or do they prefer just to be out in the open? Uh, I think they like to range. Most sheep are range animals and so they like to range but you definitely have to keep a fence around them for their own safety and for the safety of the environment around. Great. Um, and on, M. Onright wants to know how many hours per day do you work to care for the animals? So uh, we do chores in the morning and that'll be anywhere from an hour to two hours. And then there's evening chores, anywhere from an hour to two hours. And then depending if you're hauling bales or you have to move snow um, because of the temperatures, I'd probably say at least six hours of your day is spent. And then over the weekend, obviously, you're in constant maintenance of the fences, your herd health, um, getting your grains together, um, working your animals, moving them. Uh, at various times you have to vaccinate them, much like humans, they require vaccinations as well. So a lot of time goes into herd management. Great, yeah, lots of, every day, every day. And it depends on how big there. your flock is. So with our flock, I would say easily, my dad especially, uh, he is retired, but when he was working easily, four to five hours every day is, is committed just to the animals. Wonderful, so Riley S from grade three wants to know, do sheep bite? They can, yeah, they can have uh, cribbing tendencies. Um, sheep have a complete pad on the top and they only have teeth on the bottom and that, that is to chew their cud. And so their nips can hurt, but oftentimes they won't break skin. It's very different than a horse who has a lock jaw that when they bite, they have to go, their jaws have to meet before they can release. Um, so they, they definitely can have nipping tendencies. Okay, great. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Um, so grade um, four Willow Grove, can, do sheep get into fights? Yep, so at breeding season, especially for the males, they, uh, they want to challenge each other with their masculinity. So uh, they will start to butt heads and uh, when you're introducing different sheep to each other, they definitely will, will rummage and smell each other and kind of push each other around to create dominance. Okay, so Grainberg wants to know, are sheep babies ever born overdue? Uh, yes, much like, much like humans, they can be born head down, they can be born backwards, they can be born overdue, they can be born premature. Um, sheep can have miscarriages, um, so very similar to, to humans. Um, and then it needs to be navigated the same way. So sometimes those are the situations in which we need to get vets involved uh, because we have to do C-sections. So those, those measures do happen in sheep just as they do in cows, in horses, in almost every species of life. Okay, we're down to the final minute. So All right. let's do two more questions. Okay. Uh, grade four, Regina Christian School, what is the fluffiest type of sheep? Oh boy, it all depends if they're carted out or not, but uh, 
That's a good, Romneys are really fluffy and they got really curly, curly wool, so they're really cute. I'd go with probably more a Romney. Okay, great. Um, and last one from grade four, Massey. When did you get your first sheep? I was eight years old. Uh, my little brother would have been seven. My big brother was 15 and my sister was 14. But that's when we got our first purebred sheep. Um, we were born and raised with sheep. Dad had them even before I was born, as well as Angus cattle. So I've had sheep my own entire life, but my ownership of sheep started at eight years old. So uh, just about 30 years ago next year, I, I will have had sheep for 30 years under my own name. Awesome. Okay, well, that's all the time we have. So everybody, if you can give Courtney a big round of Thanks, applause. Thanks, kiddos. Thank you for the questions, for, those were wonderful. They were so great. So thank you for attending. We, uh, we're really excited to hopefully see you guys again here next year. So thank you so much. And uh, you guys take care. And we're here tomorrow with llamas. So tune in for that. Thank you.